before. What's going on? Okay. Um, so then, find all the tasks that are not marked as done. And would you? Uh, and use the same key with the not uh, data. Yeah, let's try. For the, the class. Let's just try and modify this one. The status of name is not. Uh, so like this? Yes. Easy. Hmm. Uh, perfect. Let's get the next one, which is number five. Get all the tasks sorted with the most recent first. Single most recently added task. Yeah. We can mark. Limit, limit what? Yeah. Perfect. I think we can actually also, if I remember correctly, yeah. we can just do limit one. Okay. If, if you want to. There's only one number, it's the, yeah. the limit and yeah. the. Yeah, but they're offset to the zero. So. But I usually always do this. Why? Just Why are you doing like that? Zero one. Zero one means zero means you start from the first okay. entry, and one means I want this many entries. So if you write two here, I start from zero, I get two. Okay, right? so if I want from one to two, then I'll write limit one. Yeah, then you skip yeah. the first one. So now you're going to get what one's called. Uh, yeah, this one. Remove Facebook from phone. Not the first index. Oh, sorry. Oh, yeah, you're going to get two. Yeah. So now you're going to get this one and the next one. So you can use it for if you have like let's say your web app and you have um, a list of tasks and there are like ten thousand tasks in the database and you don't want to show them all at once and you show fifty at once and then you can at the bottom of the page you can you know, next click next page you can use it for that or stuff like that. if you're searching for name and you know you're searching on Facebook names for whatever Fleming or something a lot of people name Fleming so you're gonna get a hundred thousand results then you can page through them. Uh, Cool. Let us. What's the next one? Then number seven, I think. Yeah. Um, get the title and due date of all tasks about databases. Yeah. So how would you? Uh, yeah. So select one. Title and due date. From tasks, I guess. Like. Oh. oh, my computer is lagging a little bit. Yeah, exactly. And if you use the first uh, one you made sign before, it will take. Uh, we use a two dimensional sign. If you, you compare. Yeah, so we have it on both sides. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And you can do the yeah, let's say let's say you wanted only the ones with yeah. databases the last words, you just do this. Yeah. And you get this one. Yeah. Uh, I like this, but I don't know whether it was correct. Well let's try it. I select name, then you from the class. So in a join? gets you the name of the user that's assigned to the task 
and then the due date of the task. So you're just interjoining the the task table with the user table, basically. Uh, well, if it's number seven, is that, is that the one you're looking at? Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. So here, here, what you're doing is you, you you see the down here in the results. It's a bit hard to see, but uh, there's Arika something, and she has a due date. We can we can let's get the title as well, and we can see it. So. Arika has a task that is due date on the 24th on Christmas Eve, and she has to order groceries online. So I have to add uh, like date that I have this somewhere. Yeah, but yeah. Thi so this, for example, this one says we want the title and the due date of the tasks about databases. So we don't care about the users in in this question in this number seven here. So this one, we say the task title. Oh, where was the that is. You select the title, the due date from task, and then you do the string com uh, string search thing, where you do uh, task title contains the word databases. So that's just it. Uh, okay, let us try the next one. Get the title and status of all the tasks. Uh, uh, yeah, get the title and status as a string of all tasks. As what? Uh, as string. Mm -hmm. uh, ah, okay, yeah. yeah. I just put uh, the uh, from class, yes. then put the inner join status on task dot user ID. I think we have the same issue here again. Mm. You see, you're joining, you're joining user ID and status ID. So this should be status. Otherwise, you're going you're to get some results, but they're not going to be going to be correct. Let's try it. Yeah. Actually, the reason why I wrote as a string here is because if if we just write the status, then most people would just get the status ID and not the actual status name. Yeah. So we can. You don't have to call a string here. It's just so, if you don't if you don't say I want the status as a string, people will just do this instead. They will do select task dot title task dot status id from task. That's it. They'll do this, and then uh, and then they won't then they won't interjoin. This also works because you get the task and you get the status id, but it's a bit easier to read not in progress, not in progress, all that stuff. Okay, let's get to number nine. Get the name of each status along with a count of how many tasks have that status. Yes, exactly. I, I did this. Um, you select, then in that bracket. Count? Get that size. Ah, sorry. Get that size. You, you put in the bracket. That oh. uh, that's it. Uh, you, 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 you can do that, but you don't need to actually. <coughs> So what should I write? Like just say status, dot name, mm -hmm. then comma, yeah. count, status, dot id, as task count. Yeah, let me just put it down here. From task, then in ID, status on. this will last five. Oh. So I think if we change so did you get the same numbers in that? Yeah. Eight, fifteen and twelve. Yeah. I do my two. Yeah, I send on the slack my key. Uh let's try it. So then four Yeah four. Yeah. So you have almost uh, actually the same 
uh, query. It's a bit hard to so let's uh, let's see if we can see them side by side. Or there we go. There we go. Select. Okay. Yeah. So you see, they're yeah, they're very similar actually. So I just if I just order organize them a little bit. Uh, the only difference is you see you're grouping on status dot dot id and he's grouping on status underscore id. So if I if we run this one. So with yours we got uh, eight fifteen and something, right? Let's try and run this one. So here we're gonna get eight fifteen and twelve. Does that make sense? I think it's correct. I'll just come on. Am I being an idiot here then? Okay, eight fifteen and twelve. Eight not started. Group by status dot id shouldn't it be status underscore id? I think it's the same as long as you join. Uh oh yeah, of, yeah. I'm thinking about task id. Perfect. Yeah, both work actually. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. I'm an idiot. Uh, I was thinking about grouping by task id. That's why. Perfect. Okay. Uh, number ten. Get the names of all statuses sorted by the most tasks with that status to the least. I think we can reuse something from this query. Mm. Yeah, status task one, and then group by status in this way, order by count. Perfect. Yeah. That was the uh, the homework. Uh, wasn't it? Yeah, we're not missing anything. Mm. Any questions about any of the homework? Actually, I have a problem with the inner join. Like uh, it's a bit, uh, even I solve the things, but yeah. it's a bit confusing that uh, we are joining two tables. Yeah. This and this, and then we are fetching the data from both tables. Yeah. So what? So when you're in a join in here, is um, so this for example. So you have you're selecting something from the task table, or you're yeah. selecting both from the tasks table and the status table. And when you're in a joining you're telling it to join the task table with the status table and put the rows next to each other where task where the status underscore id equals the status id so if we take the let's see if i have a document from last time uh, so we have this one right we have one with the with the cars and the buyers if you remember that one uh, it's just an example table so let's say we wanted to write a query do something here. This table doesn't exist in the database, but let's just try and and, uh, and run it. So let's say then we would say we want to find the cars that all ha that have been sold with the buyer name right next to them. Can I zoom out? Yeah, there we go. Um, so I want to list all the cars, and I want the buyer name right next to it, right? Yeah. So then I would do select cars dot star whatever. From cars, you know, join buyers on, and then I would say. So you see, we have buyer ID in the cars table, and the buyer table we have one to the ID. So then we would have, uh, what's it called? Cars buyer ID equals. Buyer.id, and that's it. So then, what it does is we can actually try and simulate that in, uh, in the office thing here. So let's say that uh, this is also our result. To so say, okay, what what should we add at the end of this is if we're joining it? We see buyer ID. Yeah, and which which buyer ID is this, this car? Yeah. So this is uh, me. So then we can actually. That would that would match with this one, right? We have number two here. And 
then we have me again down here. And then we have number three, who bought a Ford. So, okay. Oh, there we go. This doesn't need to be there. Yeah. So then this would be buyer.id, name, and so on, right? And then this row does not have a buyer ID. Yeah. So if it's an inner join, as far as I remember, we won't we won't show it, right? Yeah, it uh, it doesn't uh, count for yeah. for nodes. So exactly. So this one we said we want to inner join on the buyer table where cars buyer ID equals buyer ID. And in this case, there is no buyer ID, so this would be null, you know, in the database. So in the result, this would just disappear. Yeah. Because we we can't match it to anything. So uh, it means that uh, if you use the join, uh, inner join, mm. it takes uh, the, the rows in both tables mm. uh, when compared, yeah. and then it returns that rows. Yeah. Mm. If, we, if we compare two, three, four, then we can get it from the, from the join. Yeah, you can get from all the tables you join with. So here we just mm. select cars to start. We could also just do cars dot brand and buyer dot name, whatever. Right? Mm. Then we would get. A subset of, of the two, the two things. In an inner join, we can also entertain the table like inner join car zone where we return the bar table. Uh, the oh, yeah, you mean you can turn it around? Turn it around. Yeah, you can, you can. As soon as they have an, a relationship with each other, you can do it from either end. So you could select star from cars and then list, or from buyers and then list the, the cars next to it. Um, and you can inner join as many tables as you want. So if we have the example back with, uh, let's delete this one, don't save. If we go back to the um, to the task table and remove this stuff. So let's say we want to join all the three tables. Uh, we can actually just do that. So we said we want to join, we want to see the username, the task title, and the task name, or the status name, sorry. So let's say we want user.name, Task the title, I think it was called, and then status dot name, right? Yeah. Uh, and then we do from you is user users. I can't remember. Thanks, just user. Yeah, from user inner join task on task dot user id equals user dot id. So, let, so let's say we we did this right now, right? Now we have one inner join, okay. and we're going to get the name of the person and the name of the task. Okay. But we also want one more thing. So we say status dot name. So then we just do in inner join status on and then we get name, the title and the and the task status. Uh, so if there was more tables you could join with as many tables as you want. Uh, yeah, the task has the foreign keys to both the tables. So if we look back in the, where go? on the ER diagram, here it is. So as the task has the, the owns the relationship, so, so to speak. Mm. Yeah, it has the status ID and the user ID to both the tables, or to two individual tables. Um, and this is all one to many, so one task Sorry, one user can have many tasks, and one status can have many tasks as well. Um, perfect. Anything else? Otherwise, we'll continue with the stuff for today. Yes. Okay. Let me just stop this so we can cut it.